I'm sure some of the participants uh, have already joined. Good afternoon, friends. So today we have uh, connected on this webinar for a specific reason. First of all, thanks to all of you for taking out your precious time on a Saturday. And I'm sure all of you, you know, after having your heavy lunch, you would be uh, quite sleepy. But I'm sure this uh, topic will definitely of uh, definitely be of great interest to all of you. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritties of uh, IFRS 16 and India's 116, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ramanujam Narayan, and uh, people call me Sai in the industry. I have spent my stint of about uh, 12 years uh, through and through in the industry itself. Uh, I have worked with companies like Citigroup, ESO, TCS, uh, Geometric, HCN, and all of them have been listed companies, and I have been a global financial controller over there. So quickly. Uh, in contetra as a part of finance first i am heading that business vertical and what we do is our single most objective and agenda is simplifying complex financial challenges and when i say complex financial challenges we don't deal in uh, financing debt syndication and all our single most objective is to help finance team to upskill themselves in various areas of ifrs us gap in days sox compliances and various accounting and finance related challenges which they face in their daily routine now with your uh, kind permission i'll start this uh, webinar and uh, just to just before i begin with the technical nitty gritties uh, it is going to be a quick overview what i'm going to give it today and it will be continued with a lot of uh, knowledge sharing series subsequently so uh, just a poll question what i have before i uh, start the technical nitty gritty is uh, so in days is applicable for for all the companies whom server is representing in the webinar yes or no people can just uh, simply reply yes or no so that uh, we can move forward okay so all of you have responded right so even if ifrs 16 and india's 116 is not applicable to you it is definitely going to be of use and at any point of time it is going to be applicable to all the companies in the foreseeable future now getting into the nitty gritties of ifrs 16 and india's 116 friends we need to understand first that why ifrs 16 and india's 116 got introduced right so a lot of leases particularly operating leases were lying off balance sheet before the implementation of the standard and it used to appear in the notes to accounts as a part of disclosures now by looking at this you know all the investors and shareholders used to be uh, zap that even though you have a committed lease and even if you have a you know committed liability and in spite of that if things are not appearing the balance sheet it does not give a right picture to investors and that's the reason the objective of ifrs 16 is to bring all the leases into the balance sheet so that the investors stakeholders tax guys everyone gets the essence of the business and they actually try to make sure that whatever committed liabilities that the companies have is actually appearing in the balance sheet moving forward so indias is applicable already effective may 2015 and ifrs 16 and indias 116 is the new lease accounting standard and which has uh, of course been converged from ifrs so as all of us know that indias is already applicable for all the companies who is having their net worth about 250 crores so by virtue of that indias 116 is applicable to all the listed companies effective june quarter of 2019 that's number 1 for all the unlisted companies who is having their net worth about 250 crores their first reporting will be as of march 2020 because they are not obligated to present any quarterly financials right so directly on an annual basis they have to present their financial statements having said that 
it does not mean that you know if we are unlisted company having a net worth of more than 250 crores or uh, if we are listed company who is uh, wanting to present we would have already presented in june 2019 we should not be waiting till march 2020 we need to be ready from now and we need to do all the impact assessment of uh, implementation of india's 116 and try to make sure that we basically inform the entire management because it is going to be a big change first of all we need to understand that uh, you know accounting does not drive the business business drives the accounting and that is the whole essence of this india's 116 and ifrs 16 so what's going to happen right guys so friends uh, this particular implementation is going to impact the retail industry the most now while i am saying that it is going to impact the retail industry all industries who are heavily dependent on leases like telecom airline uh, IT industry who is having any kind of leases are going to get uh, impacted because of the introduction of the specific standard. Now this standard is not only going to have an implication on the accounting aspects but it is also going to impact the business. So let us move forward and see how it is going to impact the business right. Okay so what is lease okay so lease uh, it was not specifically defined in the previous standard so quickly and uh, one comfort what I can give to all of you is whether we uh, see the definition of a lease and whatever new definition we see in the new literature, whatever leases you are considering in the erstwhile literature, the consideration of a lease or the definition of a lease is not going to change for all of you and this has been certified by several professionals and my analysis also shows that the lease whatever you have classified in the previous standard is going to continue to remain as lease in the new standard also. So the only difference is the new standard has given a specific literature that what are the criteria for a particular contract to be termed as a lease. So the criteria are very simple that the asset has to be identified that is there should not be any substantive rights to substitute and the customer should control the use. Simple example if you get any server if you take any hosting okay and if you pay host, uh, hosting fees and server fees that is not a lease because the control of this entire transaction is there with the supplier customers the, don't get any control on this they only get a space similarly in any airport or in any stadium if you get a specific booth or if you get a specific center to be accommodated that is also not a lease because it is only a space what you get and the supplier has got the complete rights to substitute that at any point of time a simple lease whatever is being considered like lease of premises, lease of office equipment, lease of computers, lease of servers everything is going to come under the radar of IFRS 16 and India's 116 and whatever transactions you were classifying it as leases in the previous standard that will continue to remain as leases in the new standard also. So what is the big change right? So in the erstwhile standard there was a concept of operating leases finance leases right once upon a time long long ago in our CA syllabus and in all the professional curriculum what we have learned we have always studied that you know operating leases the ownership is always with the with the lesser and the lessee basically has the right to use so the accounting was very simple that street lining was done under AS 19 right so AS 19 told categorically that you need to consider the lease term and under that lease term you have to basically straight line the entire rental expenses or amortize the entire rental expenses. So operating lease accounting was very simple but there were certain nuances which we can discuss in the subsequent webinar also. Now whatever leases are not operating leases could be classified as finance leases. So finance leases there were specific conditions right where there is a right of ownership where there is a purchase uh, bargain purchase option which is there where the minimum lease payments is almost uh, equal to the fair value of the asset what is being taken on lease on day one right these were the criteria which were there for classification of a specific lease as finance lease now what was the accounting for finance leases right so the operating lease accounting was very simple you are debiting the rental expenses and you are crediting the bank account whenever you are you are paying the rent uh, rental checks and the differential was being taken as a provision and the provision used to come down as and when when the as actual escalation used to happen in the rental agreements right and as far as finance leases are concerned the asset always used to come in the books of the lessee that means the lessee used to become the effective owner of the asset 
so the lease asset used to get capitalized on day one and we used to depreciate it over the lease term right and then it used to follow the finance lease accounting which was typically like a loan emi schedule where you used to break up the monthly rental payments into interest and principal to the extent of that interest expense it used to be a finance charge and to the extent of that principal repayment it used to reduce the lease obligation what you used to recognize on day one this was the finance lease accounting which was followed under indian gap now what does india says india's 116 says very categorically that no more this jargon no more accounting of any leases operating leases right provided that leases for the long term and more than one year and are high value leases right all leases basically will be termed as right to use assets okay and the accounting would be similar to what we used to do in finance leases so we have to understand friends that the accounting whatever we are doing under the new standard it is going to be similar to the finance lease accounting what we used to do in the erstwhile standard right so this new standard brings in the concept of right to use asset i hope all of you will agree that it makes a lot of sense that if at all you are going to use a specific asset for the long term effectively you become the owner in substance and i believe in the firm philosophy that every accounting transaction has got a commercial substance so if you try to explore this specific uh, literature commercially it clearly says that if you are using a specific asset for a specific term and if it is going to cover the majority of its economic useful life for an example if a specific office equipment or a server is taken on lease for a period of say 5 years its useful life itself is probably 6 years so what is the intention of the lessor lessor wants to give away the asset right so in substance it is a finance lease so friends what is changing in india's 116 and ifrs 16 they say that substance over form you need to account these leases as finance leases only so suddenly what is going to happen my balance sheet is going to look heavy when i say my balance sheet is going to look heavy every lease transaction and get it straight friends every lease transaction is going to appear in the balance sheet as right to use asset and the corresponding less leg is going to go to lease obligation liability now there are only two exceptions which are permitted under the standard short for short term leases which are less than 12 months and the second exemption is low value items and in ifrs it is categorically defined as 5000 dollars now you will have a question what kind of transactions will fall under this all your procurement of chairs and i believe in a lot of practicality so that's the reason i am giving you all practical examples like if you purchase certain chairs which hardly cost 1000 to 2000 dollars or there are certain low value asset like ram or whatever you purchase there are two choices either you can amortize it over a period of 12 months or you can charge it off or fully depreciate in the month of purchase so that purely depends on the company policy or the policy choice what you adopt so the moment one uh, aspect what i want to cover is the moment i say that all your assets and liabilities are going to come in the balance sheet suddenly what is going to happen guys so all your stakeholders like tax guys stake uh, shareholders investors management ceo their antennas will suddenly go up because all your ratios right including gearing ratio the moment you take something on the liability side your gearing ratio is going to go up your debt equity ratio will go up your current asset to current liability will undergo a change your asset ratios will go up whatever roc return on capital employed that will go down because you are basically increasing the liability portion also and the major change major change when i say major change it is actually going to change the situation of a company from a metric perspective and from a measurement perspective friends all of us might be a part of unlisted companies or small companies today but we have to definitely understand and contemplate that whatever changes are happening in the accounting standard it has got an implication on the business and commercial standpoint right when i say this the most important metric which is being driven by many companies is ebita that is earnings before interest depreciation tax and amortization 
that will undergo a change because the perspective of companies disclosing a lot of leases as finance lease under indian gap was to show an optimal ebitda as compared to being shown on operating leases because under operating leases the lease rental expenses always used to get amortized and it used to go above the line when i say above the line it used to get debited to rental expenses right and under finance leases two components used to be there that whatever lease asset you are uh, recognizing on day one that used to get depreciated and on lease obligation you used to debit the interest expense friends all of us know that depreciation and interest is not a part of ebitda it comes below ebitda so by virtue of this the ebitda margins in case of finance leases is higher and it is favorable to the company coming to india's 116 and ifrs 16 suddenly you will see the operating margins of all the companies going up significantly because of this change now the antennas of all the statutory agencies is suddenly going to get triggered and they will start feeling that you know why suddenly the ebitda margins are improving friends you also need to consider the implication of this on income tax because income tax unfortunately in india is not completely aligned to the financial accounting system what we have because we always have this husband and wife fighting with each other in the form of mca which is ministry of corporate affairs and central board of direct taxes which is cbdt on one side if i take certain accounting standards under the guidance of mca cbdt suddenly comes with their own icds that is income computation and disclosure standards right by virtue of that okay since there is a difference between the thought process of both this particular accounting treatment also is going to have an impact of impact on income tax because the income tax are going to tell very clearly that i am not going to consider this lease accounting what you are doing i am going to go by the substance of the contract and you have to decide from an income tax perspective that it is going to be a finance lease or operating lease now majority of the times okay once we now this is a practical standpoint what i have because it is open to litigation in future because this is the first year of implementation whatever we do the finance lease the accounting for right to use asset or the new leases under india's 116 is completely similar to what we used to do in finance leases so if they were allowing the accounting of finance leases in under income tax there is no reason for me to believe that they won't, they won't be allowing this under indias regime right the second biggest change all the covenants debt covenants the bankers okay they will suddenly get up and say your ratios are significantly changing and on a daily basis the ratios what is going to get impacted is for banks and nbfcs because they have to report all these ratios to the rbi on a periodic basis so this is the kind of implication what we are looking at and one twister what all of you are supposed to think is if the operating margins are going to go high and i am going to take all the charges below ebitda what is going to happen in transfer pricing because transfer pricing works on operating margins suddenly i will have a larger increase as far as operating margins is concerned so my tnmm ratios will change and i'll have to accordingly explain the tpo transfer pricing officer about this accounting so it's a big gamut of change what india is witnessing friends so all of you mind me all of you need to understand the implication it is not only relevant for the financial accounting and reporting guys it is very much relevant the understanding of ifrs indias 116 indias and all the accounting is very much necessary for all the taxation guys investment bankers mna guys because there is all also articles available on the internet of the impact of the standards on the valuations because the moment you take this particular transaction to the balance sheet suddenly your valuations are going to change so let us take one particular case study and before that let us see what are the main components as far as the accounting is concerned now the first component of course whenever we do any lease accounting is going to be the lease term right so lease term the first relevant concept is the non cancellable period because the straight lining also what we used to do was always for the non cancellable period right now non cancellable period is the initial period where there is a lock in and if there is a reasonable certainty and if the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise option to extend the lease term because practically speaking all the lease agreements or all the lease deeds will definitely have the specific term or specific renewal option which is being given to lessee or that option is with the lesser so wherever the option is with the lessee and the lessee is reasonably certain in this situation 
the option okay so we are, there were various arguments as far as indian gap is concerned and this is not a gap difference friends as far as lease term is concerned there used to be a lot of arguments in saying that what is a typical lease term if there is a lock in what is the lease term what we take so there was a guidance note from aac also that is expert advisory committee under indian gap where they use where they have given very explicitly that if the lessee is reasonably certain that he is going to renew the lease and he is going to stay for a longer period he can definitely consider that portion also as lease term so two criteria from a literature perspective if the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise option to extend lease term and or reasonably certain not to exercise option of termination so that period also needs to be considered as lease term so the straight lining used to happen over the lease term even the lease term under the new guidance or the new standard of india's 116 will be the same lease term what we used to consider for the previous literature or the previous accounting that is one clarification what i am giving today lease liability so what is typically lease liability it's simple whatever you used to consider for finance lease the lease liability will be one and the same it is simple the payments that is going to be uh, paid over the period of the lease term okay the present value of that the value of 1000 rupees what i am going to pay over a period of 10 years if i discount it as of today considering the time value concept it is not going to be the same it will obviously be lesser than 1000 the same concept is there over here also that you have to basically discount all your future cash flows bring it to the present value and account it as right to use asset or the lease liability right so when you discount the entire minimum lease payments whatever is there over the lease term there needs to be a discounting rate right so discounting rate there are two options the first option is basically you take interest rate implicit in the lease none of the lease agreements practically can have this rate okay so in absence of this specific rate we have to take something known as incremental borrowing rate simple concept whatever bank borrowing rate is there on your loans that is the rate what you want to what you have to take if that is also not available if you go to the market what is going to be the borrowing rate that is going to uh, get applicable for me that is going to be your discounting rate right and subsequent measure or uh, measurement of this is going to be a effective interest rate effective interest rate is a specific concept under ifrs 9 which will be covering over a period of time under this knowledge series third concept is right of use asset now all of us understand what is lease liability blah 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 but what is right to use asset right to use asset is the leased asset what you used to create under finance lease the same asset will be known as right to use asset under india's 116 and ifrs 60 right so right to use asset will comprise of lease liability which you are discounting plus initial direct cost what you are going to pay to acquire the lease it can be in the form of stamp duty it can be in the form of registration it can be in the form of a certain leasehold improvement what you are doing in order to occupy that premise plus certain prepayments plus cost of dismantling cost of dismantling friends is a very important concept which is you know hovering from the fact of property plant and equipment where we take a provision for dismantling on day 1 that also needs to be considered under right to use asset minus any, any incentive received is going to be my right to use asset right let us take a simple case study right where lessee abc enters into a contract with lesser xyz for the right to use office space for the 10 year term the right to use the office space is a lease and there are no other components of the contract the following facts are relevant at the lease commencement date simple case study let us focus guys lease payments is fixed payments of usd 14000 for y27 the us dollars per year in arrears with a 3% increase every year after year 1 that means number 1 all of us know there is an escalation of 3% every year okay renewal option is 5 year extension payments during that period are usd 19523 per year in arrears with a 3% increase every year after year 1 of the extended period lessee's incremental borrowing rate has been given explicitly as 10% the rate implicit in the lease cannot be readily determined they have given the same thing so this is the rate which will be considering for discounting the liability initial direct cost of the lease is usd 5000 determine the amount of right to use asset okay now they have given categorically about the assumption i have put it as at the commencement of 
the uh, commencement date of the lease uh, lease lessee is not reasonably certain to avail the extension option when i say this okay this is peculiar to the situation where i have specifically told that the lessee is not going to exercise the option of renewal okay so the lease term for all practical reason is going to be 10 year only and i am not going to renew it right so let us look at the solution lease accounting under india is 116 first of all lease term the non cancellable period is the 10 year period which has been explicitly given and the lessee is not certain to exercise the term extension so that is the reason it is ignored so the total lease term becomes 10 years lease liability basically you calculate the entire 14527 you plot it in a simple excel sheet you will get the answer 14527 the 14527 dollars with a 3% increase every year for 10 years when you discount it for the period of 10 years at the rate of 10% the present value of that lease payment is going to be 1 lakh dollar this 1 lakh dollar okay becomes the lease liability right so this 1 lakh dollar will be a lease liability which will be credited and which will be disclosed as a liability in the balance sheet now in contrast to this let's uh, see what is right to use asset right to use asset is the lease liability that is the present value of all the lease payments that you are going to do over a period of time which comes to 1 lakh plus the initial direct cost of 5000 dollars what you are going to pay now this 5000 dollars can be of two types stamp duty and registration or leasehold improvements what i used to do friends all of you need to uh, be sure about the transactional difference what is going to happen under the new standard because under indian gap it was if it was stamp duty or registration you always used to charge off to pnl okay but if it was a leasehold improvements or any capital item you used to capitalize it but under indias 116 and ifr 16 this entire 5000 will get added to the right to use asset and it will appear as a item under property plant and equipment as right to use asset so look at the lease liability right so subsequent accounting is going to be if you look at the 14 uh, amount of 14527 it is the monthly installment or the monthly payment what i am going to do right so it is a typical home loan schedule if you look at the home loan schedule that is of the similar nature you will calculate the interest on the first day as you used to do in finance lease and as you used to do in the home loan setup typically where on 1 lakh dollar which is the present value of the minimum lease payments you will charge interest of 10% so in the first year the interest become 10000 that is 10% on 1 lakh rupees over 1 lakh dollar the total installment is 14527 dollars so the principal component is 4527 don't worry don't get tensed all these calculations can be done in a simple excel sheet okay now one of the complexity is also that whether under the new standard friends i am giving you a comfort that under the new standard the accounting technicalities is not very challenging but what is challenging is the entire calculation of right to use asset lease liability and transition provision this is what is going to be challenging now following this particular table ultimately the balance has to become zero in the end of 10th year because over a period of time the interest component goes down and the principal component goes up as it happens in our personal home loan also so right to use asset will be 1 lakh 5000 lease term is 10 10 years and the depreciation per year will be 10500 which is 1 lakh 5000 divided by 10 look at the accounting entries it is simple nothing to panic accounting entry is depreciation expense to right to use asset 10500 right interest expense debit 10000 10000 <coughs> sorry lease liability will get debited by 4527 and the bank account is getting credited by 14527 which is an yearly payout with all leases changing from operating lease to right to use asset there will be a major shift in financials look at the balance sheet position guys under the erstwhile provisions of indian gap you used to disclose assume that the initial expenses is on leasehold improvements so 5000 gets debited to leasehold improvement under indian gap but under the indies the right to use asset is going to appear as 1 lakh 5000 so suddenly your asset ratios are going to go up liabilities equity is already 1 lakh okay 
and under indes equity will continue to remain 1 lakh but the lease liability will have an additional impact of 1 lakh dollars right so right to use asset of 1 lakh is replicated on the liability side also so it says that 1 lakh dollar is going to get paid over a period of next 10 years with an surplus uh, uh, incremental interest of 10% right so look at the income statement so income statement all of us understand that the moment all the leases are classified as balance sheet or uh, the finance lease accounting is followed ebitda margins is going to improve which is very much evident through this calculation that revenue it, i have kept it as constant rental expenses 16654 which is nothing but the straight lining impact of the 10 year lease payments right other expenses 120000 so ebitda margin under the indian gap scenario is 63346 now come to indes right other expenses will remain constant the rental expense will become zero rental expense will become zero friends and it will appear as depreciation and interest so in the first year if you see interest was 10000 and the depreciation is constant with 10500 so in the first year depreciation is 10500 and interest is 10000 So EBITDA margin is basically increasing significantly, and it is eighty thousand dollars. However, the PBT is gradually going down because in the initial years the interest expense is going to be higher, and that's the reason. In the initial years, if you compare the interest plus depreciation charge under the new standard, it will always be more in the initial years than the rental expenses what used to get what used to debit in the Indian gap scenario. so this slide is very important the new leasing standard affects some critical ratios including and not restricted to debt to equity right so in days the debt to equity is going to significantly increase return on fixed assets indian gap was higher but in days is going to be lower ebitda in days it is going to increase indian gap was almost constant pbt Indian gap was higher and indes will be lower because as i said the interest and depreciation will be higher as compared to the rental expenses on net basis there is no change in balance sheet however optically there is going to be a big change which results in significant change in ratios such as return on assets debt to equity and there is going to be a significant change in pnl as well the beta margins is going to be favorable for companies fall in pbt will only be in initial years which is temporary so this is the full overview and just to move forward interesting concept guys that uh, we have not talked about cash flow impact right now what is what will be the impact of cash flow we started with 63346 and 59500 from previous slide which is the pbt now in cash flow you will add back depreciation and interest expense as far as indes is concerned suddenly your cash flow from operations will significantly increase now cash flow from operations should directly be correlated to the improvement in ebitda margins under the indes scenario if your ebitda margins are going to improve then optically your cash flow from operation needs to improve right now acquisition of right to use asset that is the principal repayment of 4527 is going to become a part of investing activity right and the interest component of 10000 is going to become a part of financing activity friends this is a big change what is going to happen in the cash flow statements of all the companies who is going to adopt in days 116 and ifrs 16 and you please be ready to answer a specific set of questions from all the investors and, share and shareholders i am not scaring you and there is nothing to be scared about this particular technical standard it is only about the understanding what you need to develop over a period of time now the disclosure of uh, future commitment towards lease payment kind uh, used to be given under indian gap and under indes significant judgments and assumptions such as whether a contract contains a lease stand alone prices for lease and loan lease component needs to be given because a uh, multiple element deliverable is a buzzword as far as ifrs and indes is concerned whichever contracts have got multiple deliverables like we used to have in ifrs 15 even if a lease contract has got certain non lease components like service or maintenance that has to be carved out separately and accounted separately the logic is the same the stand alone selling price needs to be evaluated and accordingly the maintenance and service component needs to get accounted separately positive impact on cash flow is going to be there and investors have to be aware of this 
implementation options there are two options okay so the first option is full retrospective method retrospective to each period where you have to apply this lease accounting as if you had applied it from day 1 so all the financials will be restated all the pnl will change and all the liabilities and retained earnings will get changed and the entire impact will have to be taken in the respective periods financial statements 99.9% of the companies in india are not taking this option because no one has wants to go back and reinstate all their leases what they have accounted previously okay next method is modified retrospective method where you take a cut off okay and retrospectively with the cumulative effect recognize the date of initial application effect of transition to be accounted on the retained earnings as of 1st april 2019 now you have got two choices under modified retrospective method for calculation of right to use asset and lease liability either simply which 90% of the companies are doing you calculate the lease liability and equalize your right to a uh, use asset to lease liability right and pass a simple accounting entry right to use asset to lease liability second option for every lease whatever is there calculate the minimum lease payments for the future uh, lease uh, payments which are pending and calculate the lease liability as of the date of transition right to use asset also you have to calculate separately based on the initial period of the lease and the differential will go to retained earnings right if the leases are less than 12 months then the options will be to exclude them lease liability discounted value of remaining future lease payments right to use asset remaining lease liability lease liability with adjustments and finance lease will continue to exist these are the transition options which are available and if at all if there are certain prepaid expenses and accrued expenses which is there on account of the previous accounting that has to be reversed and it has to be adjusted under right to use asset whatever is going to be there on the date of transition aspects critical aspects to be taken care of identification of a lease and asset don't worry about this as i said and i am very confident about it in 99.99% of the situations the lease will continue to remain what it was in the previous standard as well right segregation of law lease and non lease component that is the second objective changing process controls and systems to capture and maintain all necessary input for lease accounting this is one important element of change what all of you will be going through right now also practically right so uh, all of you might be facing a challenge of accounting this particular right to use asset and usage of excel right so that's the reason there are tools available in the market we have also developed one which is known as basically lease on where we give a clear uh, path to account all the lease uh, lease transactions automatically through the erb itself right so you have to uh, roll up your sleeves and try to make sure that you align completely with the erp guys who are internal to the organization and make sure the entire lease accounting happens through the system you can also do it in excel okay and i can uh, probably help to build you those excels also but excels are never sustainable friends excels are never sustainable because as a part of your eu and the various controls and eoc also excel based spreadsheets which you have that is also biggest risk what is going to hamper the organizations going forward right accounting for modification of lease terms you have to be very careful whenever there are modification and you have to preempt all the stakeholders in the gamut of your organization and you have to inform them and you have to make keep them informed about the various changes in ratios what is going to happen after implementation of the standard these stakeholders can be the management ceo board taxation guys uh, assessing officer the company secretary company secretary team because they also report certain ratios and also the entire uh, set of investors whom you have critical investors needs to be informed about this and if you are a listed company as a part of your quarterly reporting what you do you need to add a line item that this particular accounting has changed your financials to what extent that is a good practice of quarterly reporting what you do so uh i am sure that uh, you would have enjoyed this particular session and you would have uh, found this particular webinar useful i will uh, open the house for questions before i go through the uh, course what we have i would uh, try to you know answer the questions whatever you have so i'll open the house for questions quickly
if at all any participants have any sort of questions it was a quick overview but in this quick overview also if i am able to sort certain questions i am more than happy to do that of course this is not going to end over here friends so don't think that i'm going to do only one knowledge session and stop over here we'll continue to do this and with your support we will build a good ifrs knowledge base and i want to create a good ecosystem of you know finance team and all the finance professionals being upskilled on various aspects of compliances and all the accounting standards and all the compliances what they generally go through that is the objective of finance first so if at all you have any questions please raise it and i will be more than happy to answer okay then let me conclude this webinar by saying that uh, you have been a wonderful set of audience of course and uh, we'll continue to share this knowledge series right and uh, i am sure that you would have found this particular webinar useful i would request all of you to put your comments in the comment section so that we can get in touch with you if there are any queries and also we are running a detailed ifrs course for almost 75 hours with uh, 25 hours on pen drive also and it will be a good knowledge sharing session which is going to start this saturday nevertheless even if you are not joining i'll continue to share my knowledge on every saturday same time as a part of our webinar in our, and if there are any changes i'll let you know subsequently i will be more than happy to share all the knowledge that i have with all of you and let us build a positive ecosystem for sharing all the finance knowledge what every one of us have Thanks a lot guys we are good to close the webinar session and in case if you have any queries you can definitely get in touch with my office appreciate the time what you have given on a saturday and uh, hoping to see all of you in the subsequent webinar session also thanks a lot